no matter where you are in life, learning and being able to apply those learnings to the real world is incredibly powerful. It has the ability to bring you one step closer to mastery of your craft, no matter what that is, whether it's being a chef, being an author, or in our case, being a more and more effective data scientist. And in this vein, the problem with many books in our realm is that they're very theoretical. So you end up being very good at knowing all these mathematical theorems and how to build different fancy models that show off how smart you are, but essentially they don't do enough to solve a real world problem, to provide business value. So a lot of data scientists get caught in this loop of reading book after book, which yeah, they have a lot of important fundamentals in here, but I feel they don't do enough to tangibly tell you how to apply these learnings into the real world. And trust me, I've been caught in that same trap as well. Essentially, what you want to focus on is learning skills that can be applied to the real world. And in fact, I think it's best to move on to this framework of real world problem solving as soon as you've learned the fundamentals. And with enough directed effort, these fundamentals don't take that long to learn. So with this framework of thinking, the book that has helped bring my data skills into real world use the most is this one. This one right here. As the author says, knowing how to use a hammer and a drill is not the same as knowing how to build a chair. And that's the trap that aspiring data scientists can fall into. We become masters of the hammer and the drill and not much else. But this book right here, it's the first book that I've come across that will help you to cut through the noise. It will not only teach you how to use the hammer and the drill, but it will teach you which tree is best to cut down for the wood, how to design the chair, how to put together the chair, and not only that, it will teach you how to market the chair after you've made it as part of a business. So with that said, I want to cover three principles from the book. Three principles that will essentially help you to think like a data scientist. This book is split into three major areas of carrying out a data science project, as the author identifies those being the specifics of how to gather and prepare your data, how to build a tool using said data to provide business value, that tool could be a dashboard or a regular piece of code work, and then how to deliver said work. And I wish I could dive into every nook and cranny of these realms, but to show you just how much value is in this tiny little book, everything that I'm saying will be from either chapter one or chapter two. And this book is aimed for data scientists in their first one to three years of doing the craft. So with that understood, the first principle surrounds goal setting. Because every data science project has a goal. Without a goal, well, you're just messing around on your keyboard. And to start working on that goal, you need a client. And a client doesn't necessarily mean somebody directly giving you money. It should just essentially be the most important stakeholder to the project that you're working on. That could be somebody giving you money, but it could also be your boss or even yourself. So this is how you practically speak to a stakeholder about a project. You want to make sure that you know three important things. Know what questions they have that you could possibly solve with the data and the problems that answering those questions would address. What prior work have they done towards solving these problems? Because this will stop you going down blind alleyways that have already been trodden. And how would they like to receive the final product? You know, your proposed solution. And here's the thing when dealing with stakeholders, they will at times just say things that they believe to be true from gut instinct or which are just accepted in the industry. But it's your job as a data scientist to get as close to truth as possible and move away from these maxims that they present. So let's say, for example, they asked you to build a predictive model to see how an ad campaign they ran would help to increase sales on their e-commerce platform. And the guy that you're working with gave you a data set with stuff like sales and sessions from Google Analytics for their store. But internally, they use Shopify for their conversions and sessions and that sort of thing. And they just present this to you and say, this is our data. If you were just to accept that, you'd go away, work hard on making this model, and then you'd only realize when you're presenting the project that, wait, Google Analytics and Shopify, they do not count sessions in the same way. They do not attribute sales in the same way. So what you've essentially done is wasted time creating this model, which will be inaccurate to their internal results, because you accepted off bat that they said, this is our data and this is what it represents. So you should always check any assumptions that are made about the data. A little saying the author loves that I've now incorporated is trust, but confirm. Trust your stakeholder, but just confirm. Now that you know the problem they're trying to solve, you have to figure out deliverables, i.e. final products. So how do you get to know that? Well, conventional wisdom would say, you just ask the client, right? They're the ones who signed you up, so just ask them. 
but here's where the wiliness of the author shines through. He actually advises that you avoid asking the customer directly, what would you want to see? Because most of the time, your stakeholder does not know what the data can tell them. So this either leads to them just saying, I don't know, maybe this, maybe that, or just making outlandish claims because they think data scientists are magicians that can just solve stuff with data. So actually, here are two tangible real world ways that you can approach this. The first is really counterintuitive. It's guess and then gauge. So basically guess what the stakeholder would like to see and then judge their reaction. So you could say it sounds like you want a report that tells you the customer segmentation and the most popular locations. And they'll either say yes and maybe add a couple of things or if you're way off base, they'll say no, we want to see more of predictive modeling. But if they have some experience working with data people, the best method is to just ask for an example, an example of what they've seen. So maybe they've seen a dashboard online or from a competitor or from a prior time that they want implemented for our own business. Just ask them, they give you the example and then you can halfway recreate that. Essentially what you've done by doing one of these two things is avoided that whole I don't know conversation or outlandish request conversation. And you've given your customer a starting point that just helps to move the conversation along. Okay, when it comes to setting goals, everybody knows about the SMART method, but the author actually suggests a goal setting method that's more specific to data projects. Essentially, you want to set your goals based on what is more efficient. And efficiency in this case is given by a clear formula. That efficiency is characterized by the amount of value the project provides divided by the effort times how possible it is. So suppose all of these factors are ranked on a scale of one to 10. So there's different ways you can mess with this formula to increase the efficiency. You can either increase its value, reduce its effort, or increase its possibility. And essentially you play with these dials to look for the highest efficiency result. It might sound a little bit complex, but already you can see that this book is giving you things that you can apply in the real world from from when this video ends if you wanted to. Okay, this next section I will keep a little bit shorter and that's the planning section. And in the book, planning is not treated as this etheric thing that you do sitting down with a pen and a paper and slowly stepping through and be like, oh, it could be cool if we could try this and that sort of thing. No, it's treated much more cerebrally in this book and it's very tactical and tangible steps that you can take. It's like from the previous step. Okay, you know what your goals are? Okay, great. Now essentially, don't try to be too clever. This is something that I personally used to suffer from. For every little project, I'll be trying to come up with this really neat novel method that just shows off how smart I am or digging way deeper into a problem than needed. And all it does is just result in a bunch of wasted time and effort. In reality, the first question you should be asking is, has somebody done this before? And odds are, unless you work in a very niche domain or you're doing a very niche problem, yes, people have implemented this before. You might need to tweak your approach a little bit here and there, but essentially the base is there. So now what you've managed to do is increase that ease of effort lever and you're already up in the efficiency of this goal. And it's now easier to gauge how difficult implementing these methods might be. Easy sources to see how other people have done this are checking open source code, checking blogs and medium articles and even YouTube tutorials have <laughs> saved me a lot of times. And also now that you know your theoretical approach, you know what sort of data is needed and whether any feature engineering needs to be done on that data to produce the result that you want, as well as difficulties and pitfalls that you might fall into. And the last step to think about for the purposes of this video anyway, is how you interrogate the data. See, as a data scientist or data analyst, you can essentially think of yourself as a detective, albeit a much lamer, less sexy version who probably has a hunchback and just sits in the same place all day, but a detective nonetheless. And essentially, you're trying to extract clues from the data by asking the right questions. And to interrogate the data correctly, you need to ask good data science questions. And from the book, there are three key tenants of a good data science question. The first is that the data will tell you no more than you ask it. So hypothetically, if you had a data set that has the possibility of helping to build a churn prediction model, but you only look to do segmentation stuff on the data and end it at that, the data will not magically tell you the other stuff that it can do. And this is where knowing your fundamentals and how to explore the data come in handy. Because then instinctively, you have a much stronger base of knowing what it is possible, theoretically at least. 
This bleeds into the second element of a good data science question, where if your fundamentals are not in place, you, you're kind of screwed. That is basically asking the data to answer questions that it's not capable of answering. So for example, let's say you're really keen on doing some sort of uh, semantic analysis on a data set, but it's a sales data set and it's all numerical. How are you going to do sentiment analysis on that? Tell me, you can't. That might be too simplistic of an example, but just indulge me. And another problem in creating a good data science question is, yeah, you're asking questions, questions that the data can answer, but the results from those questions provide no business value. So essentially, it's pointless. So a good data science question will factor into account those three points and be concrete in its assumptions. So I hope I was at least somewhat clear in explaining some key tenants from the first couple of chapters of this book. If not, it's not because the book is complicated, but just I'm um, incompetent <laughs> at explaining these concepts. But on a serious note, yeah, check it out. It's a great book. And an idea that I've been toying with because informational videos like this are quite a lot. So I was thinking maybe for videos like this, I can start a newsletter where I just sort of send you a free template or bullet points from the video. So you can keep in mind what you should actually take away from it. But obviously that depends on if you guys are interested. So I don't know, leave a like and a comment if that sounds somewhat appealing to you. And always remember, these are just my learnings. I'm also still learning to implement this on a day to day. But that's the journey, man. That's the journey to the top. Now let's get to work.